everybody, John here, and today into the garage, I'm just having a potter around, showing you a few of my new toys, a few thoughts about uh, the year just gone and the year yet to come. And the first thing to mention is that I'm filming this in 1080p. Uh, quite a few of the previous videos have been filmed in 4K, which is technically a fabulous thing to do. But I was running out of memory card. I was running out of memory space on my Mac. Um, transfer times were massive. We're having big buffering issues with uh, YouTube with the uh, sort of live reveals, uh, premieres, etc. So I've knocked it right down to 1080p, which is good quality HD. And we'll see how we go with that. Purdy is back in the garage. Fabulous news. Um, I love blue. Blue is great fun to play with. Blue is my work car. Blue is the XJ. But she's been occupying this space for quite some time while I sorted out brakes and air suspension and other bits and pieces. And poor old Purdy had a second stint outside. So she's back in here now, which means I can get on with some great jobs on her and some more films. Um, but she's dirty. and Not dirty, dirty. She's unclean, let's call it. <laughs> So um, I need to wait for a dry day so I can wheel her out the front, hopefully with above zero temperatures, give her a proper wash and clean off, then bring her back in and I can do some detailing on her, which I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Let's start this off with a quick look back at the last year. Um, an eventful year for all sorts of reasons, obviously out there in a the bigger world, here in the UK, we had Brexit to deal with, and we've all got COVID to deal with, and that's kind of coloured some of the things that's gone on. Um, I spent a lot more time at home, which is good in many ways, but for all the wrong reasons. Um, but that's meant finances a little bit tighter, and although I've been at home, I've not necessarily been able to get out and go places and do the things that I wanted to. So, um, in all, you know, we've come through this, myself and my family, quite well. We're still on the COVID journey. But for all of you who are combating that evil virus at the moment, all my luck, all my love. The year started with, um, in terms of big events, I sold Truckee, my Navara NP400, which I'd had from brand new which was very much a vehicle I used for work. It was good for carrying stuff around. It was good for long journeys. It was reliable. And I like a truck. Uh, Four-wheel drives. I like the, the big high seating position. I didn't need a pickup truck um, specifically, but on occasion it came in very, very useful. And I sold that because of the situation with work and COVID and Brexit and all those good, good things. <clears throat> so that was the end of quite a big series of videos. And I know a lot of you really enjoyed the uh, Navara video series. Um, who can tell? We might get another one in the future. So that was quite a big event. Um, we then went on in terms of our little fleet to gain Betsy, the Volkswagen T4 Trophy. And that's our camper van. Bought mainly as a day van, but we do go camping. Um, and also with the intention of using it as a away from home office and accommodation when needed. Uh, I'm self-employed. I move around the country a lot. I use a lot of hotels. And we thought it'd be interesting to see if we could make use of a good camper van for that. And Betsy has proved herself to be a brilliant solution for a single traveller, a solo traveller. Less satisfactory for two, but um, totally usable. That's been quite an adventure and really quite getting into that vehicle and its little foibles. And done a few jobs on that over the year. Uh, major changes being swaps to the wheels, which are now on Audi alloys. Uh, fixing the clutch, which was an absolute disaster zone and still got some to do on that. Um, I've got some mods to do. And we also fitted the stainless steel exhaust system, the high performance system, uh, which really made a difference. So quite a lot of good stuff went on there. 
2020 was also the year of Olive the T2 camper. We bought Olive from uh, a couple down in Hastings who looked after her for many, many years, but she was very tired and it was going to be a long project to bring her back to near pristine. But that was just before COVID struck and um, lack of work, lack of money, all sorts of other things made us reevaluate the situation. We still ended up owning Olive for eight months. I got in a lot of work welding on her and honed my uh, skills um, and made her into a good sound vehicle. Invested a lot of time and money on sorting the interior out and got her to a presentable standard before we sold her on to her next owners who are actually not that far away from where we live and, and they're going to take her to the next level over the next few years. So yeah, great olive journey. A lot of you guys I know enjoyed the olive videos, um, but it was just time to move her along. We'll miss her. In terms of replacing Truckee with something else to use for work, I had a couple of options. Um, we could use Betsy all the time. It wasn't appropriate because of parking, etc., etc. Um, I can use Yogi, which is a Jeep Cherokee, which continues to give absolutely, genuinely flawless service. It's never put a foot wrong. Um, but that one is financed through PCP, as a lot of vehicles in the UK are. Um, it's my wife's everyday driver, although we share all the vehicles. Um, the mileages I do mean that it's a little bit of an issue to um, smash out the miles in Yogi. I don't want to put huge miles on Purdy. She is a completely usable practical classic i mean genuinely i would jump in this car and drive to italy tomorrow if we we're allowed um but she's 25 years old and she's only done 53,000 miles i can easily do 30,000 miles in a year do i want to do that to my toy no i didn't so that's where blue joined the fleet um blue is an xj diesel a 358, which is box bumpered XJ6, um, with the styling upgrades brought in by Ian McCallum. And that has been an adventure. I purposely went out there to, uh, to buy a very, very cheap car um, because A, I wanted to tinker with it, I wanted projects, and B, I wanted to do the whole bangonomics thing. I've owned like one year old X351s. So I'm used to having a nice car uh, for my big distance traveling. Um, I wanted to try the opposite side of the equation, big, lovely car that costs next to nothing, cheap as chips, and see how we get on. Save the money up front, spend it as you go, rather than buy something that should just run and run and run. And <clears throat> I bought the car knowing there was lots of faults with it. Some of them though I did not know about at the time. Um, the seller was not completely clear, let's put it like that, with the issues that the vehicle had. Um, but I'm now getting to the point where that vehicle is pretty much ready for uh, anything. I can, again, jump in it, go anywhere, do anything. And she's had new brakes, new suspension parts, uh, some electrical foibles, under tray issues, complete service of all of the oils, uh, filters, etc., and basically a getting to know you um, system going on. She also had a lot of missing parts, which was very strange. And you can look at the playlist that's blue, the X, XK, XJ, uh, if you want to see all of those films. But so far, I reckon I've spent about £800 on her, and I only spent £3,000 buying her. So I've got a, let's say generously, £4,000 car, which I believe is going to give sterling service and is a really interesting vehicle as well. So that's been quite good fun. Um, Purdy has had a few little uh, secrets told about her, 
but this year has really not had much done to her. Um, she went for an MOT earlier this year and did have to have a tiny pinhole in the elbow at the bottom of the right hand catalytic converter welded up. Um, that's quite common on these cars. The cats last very well, but once they do get past about 20 years old, um, the internals can break up, mine are still good, and the, I'm going to call it cast, it's not cast, there's a, a elbow at the bottom of the catalytic converter, but it's an unusual looking steel, and it can break down, can become porous, it can be welded though. So that's, that's a bit of an issue. She has developed a slight clonk on full articulation at the front. So if the front left wheel goes up real high and the right is low, you get a bit of bonk. And I've not tracked that down yet. It may be damper related, a bushing. It may be the anti-roll bar bushings. I'm not quite sure yet. It's, it's not affecting anything unless it's right at the extremes, but something for me to be looking at. But most of the projects that I've got planned for Purdy for this year are fun. Um, they're things I want to do rather than need to do. Some things I'm going to be doing just to share with you guys. And there's a lot more secrets of the XK8 that I wanted to do that require me to have the car in here, in the garage, and with parts off for a little while. And we're going to start quite soon with some secrets of the XK8, which are related to seats, their um, trim, how they work, how to get them to move when the electrics have gone out on them and it covers up the bolts, all that sort of good stuff that we have so many questions on. But in order to explain any of those, I need to kind of do work on something I don't, it isn't broken on my car. So I'm going to take the seats out do some other bits and pieces in terms of lever restoration that I want to do. She's in great condition, um, so for me it's just finessing, um, but I want to get into a little bit of that. We've got a reproofing of the hood to do, um, which I want to share with you guys. I'm going to do, once she is properly clean, she's going to get um, clay barred. I'm going to do some polishing both hand and machine polishing on her. And I've also got some really nice wax where I'm going to apply and hopefully show up the difference. Luckily with Purdy being a mica or pearlescent car in a deep color, she'll show up um, waxes and finishes quite well. So she's probably quite a good car to do some of those little experiments on for you guys. And then we've got a few Christmas presents that I'll come on to in a moment, but I want to install and share with you folk. What didn't happen this year um, was a meetup. And that meetup is something that I regret not getting in <laughs> earlier in um, my sort of YouTube um, history. Uh, we could have done that last year, no problem. And I thought, no, eh, no, no, let's wait, wait for next year. Don't, don't wait. If you can do something, do something. So as soon as the coast is clear, so to speak, I'll be setting up something in terms of a gathering and I'm looking forward to doing that. A big event for the channel this year was we had our photo competition, which went amazingly well in terms of number of entries, quality of entries, and the appreciation from you guys that came back to me, which was really rewarding. Um, the end result is beautiful. We've got a few left. Um, if people are still interested, then check them out on the website. Um, but essentially, I made back all the money I invested in that little project. We were able to give out some prizes to winners, and it was really, really good. On the darker side of that, um, it was a bit of a nightmare to organise. The amount of effort and time put in by myself and Joe to that competition is quite unreal. Um, you wouldn't imagine so. I'm not going to go into the details, but <clears throat> there were, were a few shenanigans with uh, less than completely honest goings on 
in the background, all resolved. It's all um, perfectly clear now, and I know how to prevent it in future. That's something that I'm thinking about doing for next year, but the memories of how much work we had to put in are still very, very clear in my head, so I'm, I'm just mulling it over. I'm sure we'll come back round to it quite soon. We've done a quiz, and the quiz went down really well, but that works best live, and I'm still doing battle with how to do live broadcasts really reliably. Um, though, those sorts of films do need to be relatively long, you know, 30 minutes plus, and ideally there would be here where I'm sat doing this pre-recorded video. Um, but by taking it back into the house, we've now got really strong internet uh, supply to the house. And that means that we can do some stuff like quizzes and Q and A's from the house easily. The challenge for the rest of this year is me potentially wiring up Ethernet to the garage. We started selling merchandise this year and we started off with the stickers uh, both internals and externals on um, the TTG logo. They've gone down a storm. People really like those. We have a regular little uh, trickle of people asking for those and I'm sending them off. We also introduced hats like the beanie and the caps, which again have gone down really well. I am considering putting in at least a couple of other merchandise items not as a great money-making scheme for me or for the channel um, there's just a couple of things that I want and I think you guys might appreciate and I'm just floating this one please don't chase me over it because it's going to take me a bit of time I really fancy getting um, a pin badge that uses the TTG logo obviously without the website address uh, a really nice one, something maybe in chrome with a little bit of red, en red enamel, and or a larger version that could become a boot badge or a grill badge um, in much the same way as you get like an Arden logo. Um, <clears throat> I'm really proud of the TTG logo. It took a long time to come up with it. And um, I, I would really like a chrome one of those hanging off the blade on the front of my car. So a couple of things that may well happen, um, but I, I need to think about it quite hard. I need to make sure I'm not gonna lose money doing it. And I need to think about how I get that made. So lots of things in the background. Earlier in the year, I had really set in my mind the idea that 2021 was gonna be the year when I do a lot more videos out and about. Um, I'm quite a fan of visiting little car shows and museums and bits and pieces. And I go on regular trips, or used to, um, with PJ and with Purdy to those sorts of things. I've not really filmed too many of them. And I thought, well, you know, this, this is going to be the year, to, which was going to be all done by summer. Um, 2021 will be that year. So that was the forward plan. That is now sort of in abeyance. We'll see what happens. So let's move on to a little bit of today content, if you like. I mentioned in a previous video, I'd been sent this. It's a seat cover. Uh, the nice people at Adam Esch, um, Jeff Adams specifically, sent me this as a little bit of a gift um, with the idea of keeping my seats clean in Purdy when I'm jumping in and out and doing all my to the garage films. And it was kind enough to send it to me. So it's kind of a Christmas present, if you like. Um, and I thought I'd give him a big shout out and Adam Esch, because I really like their products, and suggest to you guys that this is really a good idea. It's a seat cover. Um, the packaging doesn't actually say that it's for garage use as such. Um, it's obviously a protective seat cover rather than a well-fitted one. Um, the pictures kind of allude to the idea of using it every day. And some people might want to do that to really protect their kit. But I would say that as a device for keeping your seats in good condition while you're working, this is kind of the ultimate solution. I've tried using seat covers of the variety that you get in garages. Um, 
little vinyl things or even plastic ones that pull over, etc., etc. And you use them once, you use them twice, and then you can't be bothered, if I'm absolutely honest. Because they're really hard to fit uh, well, or you chuck them on the seats, you get in, and they fall off, wriggle off, slide under the seats, you slide around. They're no good. This, I'm really, really liking. So, it's not fitted, as in the shape, but it's obviously well suited to a car with this style of seat. So, a headrest and a relatively tapered seat. That would cover all of the XKs, if not all the Jaguars. Um, it kind of fits perfectly for our purposes. As it only hooks over the headrest and is elasticated all the way around, it leaves the rear seat mechanism, the fold forward mechanism, well exposed. It tucks down beside the handbrake, which can be a real issue with some of them. Um, it's not fitted at the front, so it just flops over and is really adequate. And when you sit in it, it doesn't slide around and it actually feels quite nice. A little bit of padding to it. The surface is really tough. I don't know what you call it. Some sort of nylon, I guess, but it's, it's woven. Um, that's not like an embossed pattern. That's a weave. Um, it's cross-stitched because it's padded. If I fold it back for you. On the other side, it's got like a spider's web of rubbery mesh. Sort of thing that you might find for an anti-slip material uh, that you might put in a, a kitchen drawer or in a camper van or stops things sliding around. And that effectively grips the seat with a little bit of pressure really well. And so you can just tuck it in there, it's no problems. So I'm really pleased with it. And in terms of taking it off and getting it in it, watch, grab hold, remove. So I'm going to use that. If I want to put this in, I'll just show you the back while I got it off by the way. So literally just like um, an elastic here, an elastic lower, two places on the headrest bulge. And I want to put it in, I'm doing this one-handed. <laughs> you just literally maneuver it into the car. So that would be work of one second if I was using two hands. And then just pick this up, hook it over your headrest and pull down. Done. Tuck in beside handbrake. So as you can imagine, it's literally no effort. So I will actually use it. Really pleased. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, Really appreciate the thought. And I think that's actually something a lot of us would like to have in a Christmas slash birthday stockings, etc. So that's the what they call it. E-Tech Ultra Premium Diamond Quilt Front Seat Cover, which is available in a selection of colours. Forest green might have suited mine. Black's obviously the most practical. Champagne beige would match the seats. And steel grey would match seats. But black's probably a good choice if you're using it like me as a garage cover. You'd use probably the champagne one if you wanted to keep them on all the time. This is a reveal for later in the year. I can't keep it a secret any longer. <laughs> I mean, talking about changing the exhaust on uh, Purdy since I've had her, because she's got the full on uh, standard system, which I think is way too silenced. And I decided after much deliberation, looking at all the systems out there, prices, specs, all the rest of it, that I wanted the same as I had on PJ. So I've gone for the Adamesh stage one, stage two, uh, system which deletes four boxes from the back of the car 
gives it a really nice meaty growl. If the car is pulling or accelerating, it is noticeable noise. I'm not going to pretend it's quiet, it's not. But from inside the cabin, it's not stupid. And as soon as you're cruising at motorway speeds, uh, I found it to be really, really good. Um, it's just a slightly deeper note that you can hear rather than the almost silence that you can't hear on the standard car. So I've got the st stage one, stage two system in here. I will get around to fitting it quite soon because I'm very excited about it and I'll give you a full video of all the details. But just to share now, I've gone for the oval tail trims. They come in oval uh, singles like these, which are quite large and fit the early bumper really well, I think. Or you can have the twin exits, the two round pipes, which um, sort of more what an XKR would have on a later car maybe. Um, all of them can fit on all of the models. And I'll give you all the details on what hangers you need for what years, etc. And how easy or hard it is to fit. So that's something I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. Uh, also in my Christmas box, <laughs> um, I seem to spend quite a lot with Adam Ash every Christmas. <laughs> um, and I've gone for these, which is a set of the chrome instrument rings. And again, I should be doing a video on these very shortly, um, showing you how to fit them, how easy, how hard it is. Um, they also come in aluminium. The aluminium ones are a lot cheaper and softer and can be maybe shaped a little bit if you want. Um, but I'm a sucker for the, the finish on actual chrome. So I've gone for the rather more expensive set. So I've got a set of six. So I've got the three rings that fit the uh, center instruments and the three rings that fit the main instruments. So I'll be fitting them in a video very soon, showing you how to do it and giving you my thoughts on that. And amongst a few other things in the tools department, you've seen in a previous video, if you've been watching the blue videos, um, I've got an impact driver, cordless impact wrench, commonly known as a DAC DAC. Um, and this is great for just speeding up, spinning nuts on, spinning nuts off. Mine's a half inch drive Clark brushless uh, unit. It's the two amp hour version. And it's a model up here, model CIR18, LIC. It's an 18 volt unit with a two amp hour lithium ion battery, delivers a torque of 450 Newton meters. And thanks to my friend Gareth, who's a regular subscriber to the channel and often gives the comments, he went first and sort of had one of these and found it to be really good and good value for money. So I followed his advice and gone for the same thing. I'm sure you can buy better. I'm sure you can buy better quality, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of price point for what you get, for the amount of work and use I'll give it, I think this is pretty much peerless. After doing a lot of online research and um, procrastinating, if I'm honest, I bought myself one of these clever mirrors. This is basically a mirror come monitor which has a dash cam built into the back face of it so it can see forward but also hooks up to a reversing camera and this unit i chose because you can have the reversing camera switched on all the time to use instead of the mirror itself you can hook it up to sat navs and all sorts of other things it's quite a clever um, unit um, again Chosen for the combination of value for money, perceived quality. It's just a perception until I tell you otherwise. Um, and reviews. 
and I'm really looking forward to fitting this. The question mark is, which vehicle do I fit it to first? I've got a feeling I'm going to end up buying another one of these because if it performs as it should, one will go on blue and one will go on to Betsy, the Volkswagen T4. Both give me significant issues. Betsy, being a camper, you're a long way from the back window. The back window, you're viewing through a toilet door um, and it's hard to see how far back you are. It's got a massive rear overhang. So um, that's a very obvious choice. Blue, actually, uh, one of the things I really don't like about blue is the rear viewing. Really isn't a, a lot not to like about this car. It's a beaut in so many ways. And as most of you know, it's an XJL for long or limousine. And that's another reason that it came cheaper. The L's generally are in less demand because the extra length is usually seen as a pain in the arse rather than a bonus, unless you genuinely are carrying people around in the back who uh, have more sway than you as a driver. But I quite like the lines on the L. I think it's even more elegant. And yeah, it was cheap. The negative that comes with it is, I would not pretend to be the best parker in the world. This is not an easy car to park before we start on anything else. B, big overhangs, hard to detect where you are relative to curbs, etc. And as it's a full on XJL sovereign trim, it has limo glass, which is a tint beyond um, that which you would normally find on cars. Um, we talk about privacy glass sometimes on cars as a spec. Well, limo glass is just one step beyond that. You cannot see through this. <laughs> um, we're looking into a very pale interior. Front windows are tinted. Back windows are limo glass. And so is the rear window. And what that means is when you look through the interior mirror, you're getting a very dim image that you can struggle to detect what's going on behind you. So my plan is to fit one of those mirrors with a camera mounted somewhere in that number plate recess um, to give me a much better view of the back, aid parking and a general looking behind you. Wing mirrors are great, but you can't be looking straight back. I'm also not really a fan of the limo glass aesthetically. Um, it's fine in a lot of other countries, but in the UK, there's very strict limits on how heavily you can tint the front side windows. And the contrast between the two is so extreme that it kind of looks like an unfinished tint. Um, I understand why, and again, I'm not the sort of person who's going to go and explore the edges of those rules by darkening the front windows a little bit more. But yeah, it just irritates me from a styling point of view, just a touch. Other presents this year included a set of impact sockets in the long style. These are Clark ones and six sided because maybe I wanted to start doing a lot of suspension work on Purdy and maybe changing all the bushes for power flex. So this in combination with my DAC is gonna help me on that journey. I've also got a new tape measure. It sounds like the most mundane thing ever, but if you're not seeing this um, style before, then like me, you're probably gonna go, woo! And this is a Stanley Panoramic. And why is it cool? Let me show you why it's cool. That's why it's cool. It measures using a window to the outside of its own case. So you've got this direct reading. Beautiful, brilliant idea. 
I'm sure that it's not perfectly accurate. Um, but do I care? Not a jot, because it's going to be damn close. I love it. I think it's a really good idea. It's convenient. And it's just so clever. So that's about it for this video. A little bit more vlog style than you used to from me. Um, that's basically because it is freezing cold outside. I don't want to stay out too long. I'm just getting over a few little ailments myself and I'm not going to put myself back. So I'm back off indoors to burn some more logs, look after myself and stay safe everybody. See you online, see you at the premieres of all the videos and news coming soon on some Q&A sessions, some quizzes and other stuff to keep us safe and interested. The secrets of the XK8 are now close to starting and back up again because clean the car, then get the seats out and start up on those. See you all soon. Thanks for a great year last year. 2021 is going to be better.